Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to get into more restaurants featured on Restaurant Impossible and reveal how they are now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys! Long Branch Steak and Seafood Heading over to Long Branch Steak and Seafood in Fayetteville, Georgia, Robert Irvine attempts to save it from closure. The owner, Lisa Howard, received the restaurant as a wedding gift from the previous owner and her husband, Lindsay Howard. Working at the restaurant for the longest time as a waitress and bartender, Lindsay entrusted Long Branch to Lisa since he had to return to another business. Despite not having any restaurant experience, Lisa's been running things ever since, but predictably so, things haven't been going very well. Struggling financially, she desperately sought out loans, investing $100,000 more into the business, but this only made things worse. Her daughter, Lucy, also helps out around the restaurant and feels very concerned about her mother's well-being since the pressure of running a restaurant is really getting to her. Urgently needing the guidance of a professional, they reach out to the legendary chef Irvine for some aid. Upon his arrival, Irvine seems to be unimpressed with the warehouse decor, with confusing license plates being plastered on the walls. Through some discussion with Lucy, the Restaurant Impossible hoax is revealed that the biggest problem is the lack of communication and the staff's unwillingness to listen. Wanting to observe the dinner service, Irvine notices that the customers are perplexed by the old smell since the building is new. Additionally, the patrons are disgusted by the food, especially the steak which is cooked incorrectly and the cheesecake which tasted sour. Heading into the kitchen to investigate the issue, he's appalled to find how filthy the workspace is, finding cockroaches and reprimands the staff. After deep cleaning the kitchen, Chef Irvine meets with designer Tanya who is disappointed with the $1300 budget cut due to the cockroach extermination. Regardless, her and her team revamped the overall look of the restaurant to make it more appealing to new customers. Before fully reopening, Irvine teaches the kitchen staff how to make new dishes on his menu, which includes a scallop dish and a properly cooked tenderloin. During the relaunch, not only is the staff happy with the changes made, the customers seem to love the updated decor and improved menu. Several months after Irvine left, the restaurant decided to bring back some old menu items for the regulars since the changes were too different for them. Thankfully, Irvine seemed to have boosted Lisa's confidence since she was able to finally lead her staff. However, soon after the episode aired in August of 2012, Long Branch Steak and Seafood closed down. Supposedly, one reviewer pointed out that their biggest mistake was focusing more on regulars than new customers. Do you guys think you would have done the same thing in her situation? The Main Dish Robert Irvine tries to save yet another restaurant called The Main Dish in Meridianville, Alabama. Owned by Ken and Lynn Tiverberg, they both dreamed of running their own restaurant since they're very passionate about cooking. Before taking on the business, however, Ken worked in a recycling facility but jumped on the opportunity to purchase the main dish when it went up for sale. It should go without saying, but it's one thing to dream about owning a restaurant versus actually running one, which is what the couple would quickly learn. Working every day with absolutely no days off, the pair practically live in the restaurant which has taken a toll on their happiness. What's more, their efforts haven't been rewarded since they're $250,000 in debt and haven't taken a salary in 6 years. Knowing that the restaurant could last only 6 more months before needing to close down, the couple reach out to Robert Irvine for some help. Later arriving at the restaurant, Irvine meets with Lynn who is oddly dressed as a hot dog to attract in customers. Welcoming the famous chef to their restaurant, Irvine promises to pinpoint the main issues at hand and attempt to fix them. First, he asks them about their finances which they barely know, but they reveal that their revenue might be close to $18,000 a month which can barely cover the rent, food, and labor costs. Next, Irvine learns that the restaurant heavily relies on frozen food since they need to save as much as possible. To get a better scope on the issues at hand, Irvine watches the service and notices that there's a lot of poor communication. Going into the kitchen to taste test some food, none of the meals served satisfied him, but he was still hopeful he could turn things around. Ready to move into the renovation stage, the Restaurant Impossible host meets with designer Tanya who has some ideas on how to modernize the place. Following this, Irvine attempts to resolve the issues with the restaurant but notices that despite the fact that the building is on a busy road, they still fail to get customers through the door. Advising that the family hosts events at least once a month to create buzz about the main dish, Irvine creates one for them with monster trucks, bouncy castles, and free food samples. This was a great choice since after the event ended, a collection of people promised to return to the restaurant for a meal. Once the renovations were complete and Chef Irvine taught the staff his new menu, things seemed to be going in the right direction. Months after the show aired, sales for the restaurant shot up and most customers seemed to be happy with the changes made. However, after receiving an offer to purchase the restaurant that was too good to refuse, it became JoJo's Restaurant in February of 2013. Italian Village for yet another season 4 episode, Robert Irvine pays a visit to Italian Village in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Owned by Rob and Rob Jr., they purchased the restaurant over 3 decades ago when they were much younger. 
Investing a total of $1 million into the business, while it may have been a money machine in the past, that is no longer true. In the last decade, their profitability really went downhill, so much so that they were going to be forced to close down in 8 months, which called for the help of Robert Irvine. Later meeting with the owners, Irvine notices that there's a lot of conflict between Rob Jr. and his father. Like how Rob Jr. was under the impression that he was going to become a general manager, but his dad always prevented him from making any changes to the menu or taking control of staffing. This very confusing job description not only made running the business impossible, but deteriorated the father and son's relationship. Vowing to try and untangle this toxic family dynamic and revive the restaurant to a sustainable level, Irvine gets to work. Starting by asking the owners about their finances, Rob's father reveals that they are half a million dollars in debt and losing close to $5,000 a week. Despite the fact that Rob Jr. is the head of the operations, he doesn't know any of the revenue figures since his father keeps them from him. Rob Sr. admits that while he does listen to his son's suggestions, he ultimately isn't ready to make any decisions. Why he gave him the position of general manager, but not let him do anything baffles me, but anyway. Irvine decides to invite some guests over to eat at the restaurant to not only observe the service quality, but get some feedback. It becomes very clear why the restaurant is failing since the meals served are absolutely horrible. Wanting to clear the restaurant to hold a staff meeting, Irvine unexpectedly finds some evidence that the building might be infested by mice, like urine, fecal matter, and corpses. Getting the staff to put their complaints about the restaurant in boxes, most say that the biggest problem is the weak leadership. Following this survey, it became clear that Rob Sr. needed to start putting his faith in his son's managerial skills if he wanted the restaurant to succeed. Agreeing to put aside their differences, the father and son duo seemed to finally be getting along which meant that Chef Irvine could start working his magic. After slimming down the 180 item menu down to just 30, replacing them with better choices, and giving the restaurant an aesthetic overhaul, things were looking good for Italian Village. Thanks to the Restaurant Impossible team's help, the business's sales went up by 18% which is certainly great. Although despite the fact that they kept all the changes Irvine made, the restaurant still ended up closing down in July of 2014. Apparently, Rob Sr. blames the closure on the local economy and the fact that a casino opened nearby which stole their customers. Hey, at least they tried. Stella's Italian Restaurant Heading over to Stratford, Connecticut, Irvine attempts to save the failing Stella's Italian Restaurant. Purchasing the restaurant over 15 years ago despite not having any experience, owner Michael has sunk $700,000 into the business. As a result of the local economy suffering, they began to lose their customer base which forced the owner to start working 90 hours a week. Desperate to get some help before he needs to shut things down, Michael reaches out to Robert Irvine for some aid. Arriving at the restaurant feeling disappointed, Irvine doesn't seem to like the decor, especially the booth which makes the restaurant feel smaller. Testing the food, it's expectedly poor in quality since they cut corners on everything due to lack of funds. Holding a meeting with the staff, it becomes clear that they are the biggest problem since they're unruly and there's a lack of leadership. In order for things to run smoother around the restaurant, Irvine makes Michael's mother Camille take charge of the front of house, while Michael himself takes control of the kitchen. Months after Irvine left, the restaurant seemed to be up by 20% in sales and Michael began to really develop his managerial skills. Although in the end, even with mostly positive reviews, the restaurant closed down in August of 2014. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!